Lit. What's poppin'? How can it say we are live like I'm Bruce Buffer? Are you live right there? Yeah, we are we're live okay, right now. Okay, sick. Give us one moment, folks, as we add in our featured guest of the week. Of the week. There we go. Uh -huh. Hello. Yo. How's it going, Kevin? Good. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Thanks for taking the time to join us, man. Really appreciate it. We know you're on the road, so it means a lot. No problem. Yeah. Um, so for most people that are uh, most people that are Muay Thai fanatics, MMA, combat sports fanatics are familiar with who you are. So no introduction needed. However, our platform, Northern Striking, is meant to kind of give a platform to Muay Thai in Canada and uh -huh. to people that aren't necessarily too familiarized. So I just want to give a quick uh, intro on who you are. And so uh, for all those that are joining us, hello, hello. Uh, we are live with Kevin Ross, Muay Thai champion, American Muay Thai pioneer, including the super lightweight WBC champion, the WBC international champion, amongst many other accolades. Very honored that he could join us here today. And we are just going to ask him some questions so we can continue to support and people insight as to the things that people are doing. And uh, again, thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Um, so I guess uh, to start off, first and foremost, congratulations on your retirement at the Triumphant Sports Card. Thank you. Um, I guess my first question would be, uh, how's retirement going? Uh, it's good so far. It's weird for sure. It's definitely a, a life change thing. And, um, you know, you're, you're, you're going from one extreme to another. But it was also kind of a progressive thing over the last year or so with more 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 longer than that really but but with covid and everything and the gyms being shut down and everything uh you know not knowing if you're ever going to fight again or train again all that kind of kind of all worked together towards this so it, it wasn't as drastic as it may have been a couple years back you know uh and also just with the time in my life and the stage and everything it it really was just just the right time for me, you know. Kind of just worked out that way, so it's not as drastic as it is it may have been at, at other times. I hear you. I, the um, what I found really interesting about that triumphant card um, is because we came down to fight at the TBA Championships a week later from Canada, so okay, the, it was a buzz. They were talking about the fights, and yeah. from the amateur fights, you had the likes of up and comers like Tierra Brandt and Coral Carnicella. Mm -hmm. And then you had Luke Lesse make his debut, one of the finest fighters in the amateur scene out of the Midwest. And then it closed yeah. up you in your retirement fight. So it was this really nice poetic lead up to it. And you had like these like intersecting like edges of people's careers. But uh, yeah, like the whole thing was just, I, I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better event and moment to really have all that kind of come together with being the first, really the first big, show that's happened since COVID and everything. And it, it was really like a reunion of all these different generations and everyone coming together from all over the world. Um, you know, there, there's, there's always that piece of you that's always going to want to fight and keep going longer, but I, I just don't see how it ever, could ever be better than that moment. Clearly. I, I mean, it would have been great to win and all that stuff, but just the whole event in general and everyone that was there and just the vibe that was there, it was, it was really just this magical thing, you know? Awesome. And um, would you say, obviously, you know, it was bittersweet from what I understand, but was there something yeah. that was surprisingly pleasant about retiring? Uh, I guess, I guess the sense of, of accomplishment and just, just being done with a, a long, <laughs> a long journey, you know, just, just feeling, feeling that sense of completion there's there's that uh that level of that and i don't feel you know i have no regrets or there's nothing that i wish i could have done but didn't do at all you know that, that all of i mean all of my career was really from my perspective was just a bonus to me because i never thought i was gonna have one fight let alone almost 20 years of it you know so you can always look back and say, I wish this, that, and the other would have been different. But for me, it was all just a blessing and I, I wouldn't have changed a thing. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm 
beyond grateful for everything that I was able to do for every, every, every moment, the good, the bad and everything in between, you know, it's all, it's all an accumulative thing. It's not just one moment, not just one instance. It's the whole thing put together, you know, just, it's like your life. It's, it's the whole book, not just the pages in between. Right. And um, that, that's honestly beautiful, man, because um, even, you know, knowing about your story and you having get into Muay Thai, and you expected to hear a lot of people, you know, at that point in your life, from what I understand, you felt people would react negatively to you telling them about your ambition. And that one friend that told you to go and pursue it and, you know, yeah. pursued it. I'm, I'm sure all of these things kind of like came together full circle, right? Yeah. And, you know, even even just this last fight, just getting to the fight and being able to get back in there again, like that by itself was the biggest victory of all time because every moment I was just waiting for something to happen, for someone to get COVID, for the event to get shut down, for an injury to happen. You know, anyone that fights knows at any moment these things can happen. So just getting to be in there again by itself was the most enormous victory you know and like yeah there's all there's all there's all these levels and layers to it but but just the fact that it even happened was very unlikely you know so so how can you how can you be upset about that it's the whole thing is just a uh, very surreal um experience this whole career and everything that's happened over the last uh 18 and a half years is just it's been like a dream Awesome. So, um, going back to like all your experience, um, now that you have like 18 years of experience, what in your training methods changed so much from the beginning? You know, I wouldn't really say anything necessarily changed a lot. I would say it developed and got fine tuned. I was very fortunate to come up, um, with people and, and just just the way I am in general, that that we're very focused on fundamentals and basics and understanding uh, what really gets you to progress in this sport, and and not so focused on and particularly that time in the world, you know, people weren't so focused on social media. There was no social media, so you didn't really think about it. But you know, there's still people that were doing it for for the the view as opposed to reality. Um, so even though social media wasn't prevalent, that mentality w is always there, regardless of what uh, decade you're in. But for me, I've always had that um, understood that ha just hard work and determination is, is what in the long run will always uh, win out in the end. You know, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You just got to put your head down and do the work and never stop. So I, I feel like I've always had that mentality and perspective and then through the years of um getting more experience training overseas training with different people fighting different people you progress and develop and accumulate different methods but at the core it's, it's all the same thing you know it's just mm. keep it simple and <laughs> do what works and then okay. stick to the fundamentals and develop and you know th those kind of things i don't think um have ever changed for me but uh, like i said I, I was very fortunate to just come up that way and that, that's always been at the um base of everything that i've done whereas a lot of people tend to not have that right away and develop it that's why when i teach that's something that i really try to instill in everyone is is the importance of your foundation and the fundamentals and the basics because if you're not building on a solid foundation it's it's all going to come tumbling down when things get rough of yeah. course and then going back to you training overseas, what do you think is the biggest difference between Muay Thai in North America and then Muay Thai in Asia or Europe? Like, are behind in North America? Do you think? Like, yeah, I mean, a lot of that is it's it's more just our lack of experience and lack of uh, pr competition, the the pr uh, prevalence of 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 where you can do it, the the gyms, the high level people. Um, that kind of thing, you know, it's more along those lines than it is. Well, I would say they're, they're they are more fo have that same kind of mentality where it is just very simple. They're very focused on what it is they're doing, not not what it looks like on the outside, not not who's watching, and you know, it's 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 a much more focused training, I would say, 
Um, but as I said, that that's really about your why you're doing this, not necessarily what country you're in or who you're around, because you can find those people in, in every country, regardless. So there, there just might be a lower percentage of them here, whereas in other countries, uh, particularly Thailand, you know, they're doing it for their life and their livelihood. It's their job. They're not doing it for, for fun. Yeah, yeah. I find over here in North America, I feel like the vibe is like very recreational, right? Yeah. Of course, and you know that's to be expected. Um, I think there's, I think there's a place for that, and there's, there's a good. Um, I think there's a helpful thing to that that shows there's a, a a spectrum in this art. You know, from from the fighting to the martial arts to the just being in shape to the just having something to focus on. You know, there's a time and a place for all of us to do this. It's just you got to know what what you're doing and why, and surround yourself with the people that are kind of looking down that same road as you of course of course um up like one fc in muay thai with the little mma gloves what was that a question would you say yeah, yeah. what do you think about one fc are you a oh fan? what do i think about it I, I i i dig it man i think it's cool i think uh you know i think all all the times they've kind of done side things like it's muay thai but a little bit different i think it's cool i think it to a degree, it, it adds another element to the art. I think it's something, you know, some people are just more geared towards that kind of style, you know, so it's very, it's helpful to them where just having regular boxing gloves, it's, it's, it's a different sport completely. You know, you can't even really necessarily compare the two. I think it's, um, yeah, I think, I think it's great. I think it's great to have that. I don't think it's something that, takes away from the sport because the sport in itself is is its own thing you know no matter no matter how you change it or whatever you do to it it's nothing can really take away from that so um yeah i think it's cool and and just just the fact that they're able to um have a platform for people to fight on uh internationally and on the world stage there's so few places to do that. So regardless of whether it's strict Muay Thai or something similar, I, I think is a good thing. Uh, hopefully it helps promote the sport all around, whether it's that kind of style with MMA gloves or, or not. Um, yeah, yeah, I like it. And um, yeah, you know, kind of just doubling down on that, even I noticed obviously in, in one championship, the sport itself in its, when you're watching the three rounds or the five rounds, whatever it may be, it's Muay Thai. But I do feel like the more that I've trained in the sport and other people begin to train in the sport, they realize the thing that encompass what's around it, the Y crew, the prayer before you walk out. A lot of these things I do feel serve to distinguish Muay Thai in a way that's kind of different from a lot of martial arts, right? You know? Yeah, yeah, completely. I completely agree. I think, I think that's the beautiful thing about Muay Thai is, is all those elements that do set it apart. Uh, and then when you do have it in another atmosphere, like one FC or, or anything like that, or uh, Max Muay Thai, even though it's similar to shorter rounds and stuff, um, it allows more the 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 not legitimate but the, the strict Muay Thai to kind of stand apart. So regardless of all these other things, I think I think it uh, just kind of shows you the different elements and shows you what's what and what it is to do it at its purest form. And then there's, a, there's other avenues to take as well. And for some people that, that might be better for them, particularly I think guys that are coming from MMA, maybe, you know, that might be a little more their speed because they understand it a little bit more. I mean, you don't, most people don't understand how different it is just, just changing those gloves. I mean, it's, it's night and day. It's a different thing altogether. You know, it's a, it's a completely different sport. It's not, you can't even compare the two. I would even say, um, because you've competed in MMA, in MMA before, right? And um, it was it wasn't Muay Thai with the MMA gloves, but it was still MMA. I think something that I we've been meaning to ask actually is, how would you suggest someone who's a Muay Thai fighter who wants to try his hand at MMA? What do you think is the most important factor to kind of zero in on when you're making that transition? Uh, I would say the biggest thing is to learn like defensive wrestling, defensive jujitsu. Uh, it's kind of like learning how you would, I would uh, uh, tell people to approach the clinch. You know, it's like start from a good solid foundation of just the fundamentals of defense. You know, we, we, we want to learn all these things. We want to be able to do all these things. 
But until you're at a place where you're comfortable just being there and not being thrown around and abused, <laughs> you're never gonna, it's tough to develop all those offensive weapons, uh, yeah. particularly in MMA. It's like, I know if I'm a, a ground person, it's like, I know all I got to do is threaten this and your, your, your stand up game goes right out the window. And that's why you see um, mediocre stand up guys kind of tool really solid stand up guys. But as soon as you throw in that element of the ground or even just threatening that element, it changes the game completely. So your your credentials in stand up are invalid. So understanding that, understanding that it's a different sport altogether. Um, and you got to approach it as such, just like the clinch. Uh, you got to view the clinch almost that as, as its own martial art, because even though a lot of things apply across the spectrum of, of like on the outside stand up fighting game and on the inside, there's a lot of similarities uh, in kind of the rules that apply to both. Um, it, it's very different. You got you have to approach it as its own martial art and train for it the, the same way you train in time and energy you put into the, the striking aspect, or else you're never gonna you're never gonna you're never gonna develop. Particularly when you're going against people that have really developed their clinch game, and they're gonna throw you around like a baby. One hundred percent. Would you say um, the clinch? Did you already? Is it going to Thailand? Did it really uh, set into perspective how the clinch? is in and of itself its own martial art? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, until until you've had a child <laughs> manhandle you, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, not to say, I didn't think I ever had this perspective, like I knew what I was doing or anything, but that really lets you know how, I guess, how many levels there are you know, and really where you are and where basically where America is. I'm like, you're at level zero, in it, no matter how good you are until you've even experienced that. It, what it does is it shows you how, how long this road is and how you can, you can continually develop really forever. And we have a, I would say people have a very limited perspective of what the levels are. I mean, you, you can watch it all you want and you can see it all you want. And you can even train and fight in it all you want. But if all you've ever done is trained with and fought people in this continent or on a certain level, you really have no idea how, how high that level goes. It's very, it's a daunting thing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an awakening once you see that. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's just, it's just like learning anything. It's like the more you learn, the more you realize there is to learn and you can never stop learning. And anytime you think you've learned it all, you're going to have a rude awakening from somebody that's been doing it longer. Right. Even in, uh, in your book, Dancing with Sanchai, do you feel like that really set into perspective, kind of like what it's like to finally go up? I mean, you're going up against essentially the, the poster athlete of the sport, right? So I'm sure yeah. like all the emotions you described going into it, leading into it, the conditions leading into it, that probably, I mean, I, everything, there are different things that change in the there's different turning points, I feel, for every athlete. But do you feel as if, in the lead up to your bout against Sanchai. That really yeah. yeah, that was huge. I mean, I would say more more so after the fact than leading up to it, because leading up to it, it's like you can't even really you have no perspective of what, what you're doing. You just know you know how far above and beyond your experience and ability level somebody is and you can't you can't think about how what the gap is. You just gotta give it every possible thing you can and then see, see what happens, you know? And, and that's kind of been, that's been a theme for me since day one, really. So it's, it's, it's always been a, a progressive thing with continually fighting people. I, on paper, I shouldn't be in there with, you know, it's, it's not, not like he was the first one. He was definitely the biggest, I would say gap there, but that's kind of been the theme throughout my career since day one. And, uh, each one was another stage and another step, but but the, the next step was just as far as the one previously, you know? Even the fact that you started training, I believe, was it at 23 years old? Yeah. Um, you know, the notion that to be a high-level athlete, you have to start at this time or you have to start at this point. And it's like your whole career has kind of been a, guess what? Like, not really, but obviously there's more to it than that. But I think that's one of the things that really – it's one thing to be a pioneer. It's one to defy odds over and over again, and to be in rooms and places that people don't think a person should be in, but yet here you are. 
Yeah, and that I mean that's the thing with anybody I would say that that makes it to a certain level is the odds are no you're not going to and you could say that about anything and does that mean you shouldn't try and give it your everything cuz you don't even know where you can get to and I think that was a big realization for me in the beginning because I did keep myself from going after this thing that I wanted to do for for almost a decade because I learned about the sport in 94 I was 14 years old and you know I just I always use that excuse that that we all have is like ah, I'm probably not going to be good enough you know like what's the point I'm not going to make it uh, whatever whatever it is and you know I I I let myself believe those things for for almost a decade and then one day I just realized how much of my life I wasted wondering or or using those things as an excuse but you don't even know if that's even real or not until you do it you know you you can make all this shit up in your head about why you can't and your reasons why um but everybody's got reasons the most successful person in the world has reasons you would have no idea about cuz they don't <laughs> they probably don't talk about it and it's not as uh people aren't as vocal about their shortcomings as 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 their successes but it, one thing that i tell people a lot is go go and study any person that's ever made it to anything uh, uh substantial in this world and i guarantee you they've had more things to overcome than you could ever imagine you know it's not about it's not about talent it's not about being uh born born to the right family it's not about looking the right way that there these are all just elements of success but they're only singular um and nobody has the whole the whole package put together and whatever you may be lacking you probably have something that somebody else doesn't have and um you know we just use all those things as excuses not to go after something because we don't feel like we can and one day you're going to realize how much of your life you wasted wondering what if you know i can't and you don't really know until you do it that's really really well said i i suppose is that kind of where you um reiterate that thing goes where it's like overcome your fears and reach your goals yeah i i think i think you got to realize there's no guarantees in life and none of us know how much time we have when you really think about it how much time we waste on on the what ifs or the maybes and the i don't know if i can and all these excuses we give ourselves to not go after stuff that that we want to go after but when it comes down to it the only guarantee is by not trying you're guaranteeing yourself failure by not going after something and the only way to accomplish anything is to risk failure and you're going to fail know that you have to fail your way to success that's the only way to be successful uh, the easiest uh, comparison is just in I always talk about lifting weights because that's something people get it's like if you want to get stronger you got to lift weights you got to lift weights that you can't lift and you got to progressively lift a little bit more and next time you do it again you do it again you do it again you can't do it and then you get stronger and you don't even realize how much um progression you're making until you look backwards and now all of a sudden you're this super strong uh experienced person but each day it seems like you're you're probably it feels like you're failing more than you're succeeding you know and uh that's why i think that's why it's important to not focus so much on the immediate because it's it's you're in, this is the long game you know there's no there's no shortcuts there's no quick ways to success anybody that says that is full of shit <laughs> what they're selling you something because that's that's a lie there 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 is no easy way to accomplish anything it's hard it's difficult you have to go through more failures than you could ever even imagine but you have to also know why you're doing it and that you're in it for the long haul and that each each failure comes with a lesson if you use it and you're going to get better and you're going to get stronger um and one day you're going to be able to look back and realize how far you've come undoubtedly um you know before we wrap it up uh Thomas did you want to kind of um, summarize the shop of questions or? yeah yeah i have one more question so uh, i've heard you say before if you're in Muay Thai for the money find another sport <laughs> um and I, Muay Thai personally like um and it drives me nuts that it's not so popular and people aren't getting like that kind of special way to train what they do to their bodies um yeah. i think like with one fc and even in like north america like now i see there's a lot more shows um 
Canada, there was a show like offering like ten thousand dollars for a tournament winner, which is like you don't even hear of that, right? So, do you think in the future there will be more popularity and like potentially like people could earn a living just purely off fighting in Muay Thai? Uh, I there's going to be. I mean, I think there's always going to be that very small percentage of people that can earn a living doing uh, martial arts or fighting. But even, I mean, you look at boxing, look at the percentage of people who actually make make a living and make a good living of it. It's it's very, very, very small. Uh, and you could say that about really anything in life, the people that really succeed and are like the top, top of the food chain. Uh, it's a small percentage. And if that's your driving goal or factor yeah you should probably do something else <laughs> i'm not gonna say that that that's not a good driving force you, I, I would just say that there needs to be more to it than that um you have to you have to want to go through this more than just the money more than just the success more than like that's kind of the good thing about it not being popular particularly when i started is that wasn't even a factor in it like why would you do this sport <laughs> there, there is no money there nobody even knows what this sport even is at that time you tell people you do muay thai and nobody had a clue what it was and you had to tell people it's kickboxing sort of <laughs> and even that they're like oh you mean like karate yeah yeah and uh you know i think i think there's a lot of good to that because it it weeded out a lot of people that were doing this for those um surface reasons but but as i said just because um, like social media and the prevalence of the sport are, are more now. I, I always feel like the same percentage of people are doing it for the same reasons. Even if there's a higher number of people doing it, that percentage never changes. You know, you're going to have the 10% who are doing it just for the love of the sport to push themselves, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to have the uh, 80% that are right there in the middle for, for a, a lot of variety of reasons. And then you have the, other ten percent, they're just doing it because they're shitheads and they think it uh, makes them look a certain way, <laughs> or something like that. Um, but yeah, so there, I would say there, there's good and bad to things becoming more popular and more prevalent, and you know, money involved. But with every, when things progress like that, you gotta the whole spectrum progresses, the good and the bad. So um, yeah, of course, I want to see people be able to make money in this sport and support themselves and their families. Um, but there's also stuff that comes with that too. So I'm, I'm conflicted on that. I mean, I hope that it continually grows in a way that, that stays true to the sport and keeps the purity and the love and everything like that. But I mean, that's not the case because everything's going to come with it, you know? Of course. Yeah. So, um, great, insight man great interview it really means a lot that you would um you know reach out and do, the, do this with us you know i think even the landscape right now in canada is it's really starting to gain traction especially where we are in the area but you're hearing uh -huh. old rural places in canada and the sport is starting to pick up so it's yeah. very important that um a lot of people that were around a lot of people in canada get that insight of what Muay Thai is about and going past the superficial essentially so yeah. thank you so much for the interview and uh you know if hopefully when things open up in this country we can cut, bring you down for a for a seminar sometime yeah i'd love to man let me know anytime yeah it'd be awesome we, we appreciate it and uh you know it means a lot so thank you kevin yeah thank yeah you. my pleasure nice talking to you guys all the best yeah. oh. thank you for joining the interview folks hope y'all liked it um now, excuse me while I attempt to be technologically literate and save this on IGTV Live. It will be available. This is Thomas, TBA champion. Bop, bop, bop. And this is me. Okay? <laughs> Just handsome. See you guys soon and uh, much appreciated. Okay, I think you have to end it. Uh,